All right, updates on the 56. I figure I do this a little bit differently, um, mostly because I haven't done a bunch of small video clips um, in the recent months, as I've done some updates to the car. So um, I'll use this time to explain a little bit more about what I'm doing, why I'm doing some of these decisions, and uh, show a little bit more of the progress. Um, first is, why am I doing a full chassis rather than just some bolt-ons? Um, for those of you who've built and driven <laughs> um, old cars before, know that they drive horribly. Um, they drive, they stop, they handle terribly. So doing a full chassis um, should hopefully make it feel like a more of a modern car. Um, and a lot of times the combination of the parts that you bolt on doesn't uh, improve the experience. It just gives you more problems to chase. So I'm gonna address all the systems as I build the car. I'm going with hopefully the best of the best with Roadster Shop uh, from a drivability standpoint. So with that said, um, you can probably see behind me here some of the progress. Um, let's start with the, the body's up here. So let's start with the motor. So Wegner Automotive built me one of their street motors. It's a LS3 base block. Um, they built it for 93 octane pump gas. Um, basically ordered everything with it that I could that for, uh, for a street purpose. This dynode at 1,014 horsepower, <laughs> which is insane. Um, thank you guys for building that. And it's on 17 pounds of boost. It makes uh, 900 foot-pounds of torque with a completely flat torque curve from 4,000 to um, about, I think, 6,500 RPM before it starts to fall off a little bit. The front pulley here, um, 1.7 inches. If I change that, um, they dynoed it with a small pulley as well. The small pulley um, takes about 15 minutes or so to change and swap out. And that puts it at about 13 pounds of boost, I believe, from if I remember the dyno chart correctly. And that puts it at about 850 horsepower. So if I need to tune it down for the street at all for daily driving, um, we can do that. But um, first pass, I'll leave it tuned up and then uh, we can adjust it accordingly as I get the car sorted out. So um, obviously a roaster shop fast track chassis showed up. Uh, absolutely work of art. This thing drops right on the body, hits all the mounts perfectly. It's just beautiful. <laughs> well thought out. Um, everything is serviceable and easy to get to. Um, that's one of the challenges with some of the aftermarket stuff. You don't really think about serviceability um, or access points and they've done a great job uh, thinking through all that stuff. Like the Cobra sitting over there. Cool car, fun to build, but oh my God, it's, I want to kill myself every time I have to work on it. It's a huge pain in the butt. So, a um, couple options here. So C7 spindles instead of C6 on their fast track. Um, those are all recent because GM apparently stopped making their C6 spindles. They ran out of inventory in the pandemic um, and started the manufacturing process. So, um, Willwood rack. That's the red rack in there instead of the um, stock Mustang rack. A um, little bit nicer unit. Um, and they actually, on the lower cross member, they dropped the motor down a little bit for me. So I had plenty of room with hood clearance on the supercharger. Um, that's one of the standard options you can choose on these chassis. Um, I checked the boxes for all their stainless steel brake lines, um, as well as just about all the other boxes. Um, the brakes are bare brakes, uh, six piston, 14 plus front and rear. So nice, nice units. The rear have integrated parking brakes. Um, let's see, other things, um, ultimate headers. So fantastic uh, build quality on those things. Um, as I just kind of keep working my way back here, Bowler Transmission built me a 4L80E um, to handle all the horsepower. Uh, a custom converter. Um, all that other fun stuff that needs to be happening. So yes, it was a pretty penny. <laughs> Horsepower is not cheap. Uh, neither is the managing the heat that it creates or all the other support systems that need to be managed. So uh, motor all in with headers and everything's about 30. Um, transmission's 10-ish. If the chassis was about 30, um, plus you know a few other things that need to be 
out of like the exhaust and the drive line and fuel tank, fuel system, all that stuff. So it's not cheap, but uh, do it once, do it right. I'm also trying to make um, just about everything I can buy made in the USA, just a better quality parts for everything. Um, all right, let's kind of work our way back. Um, QA1 carbon drive shaft came in the other day. That's the most recent part. Um, custom made that so it'll handle the horsepower. I didn't want to have any issues with the torque and the fact that this thing will probably weigh north of 4,000 or so pounds. Rear end, um, strange unit, um, upgraded axles, um, the entire center section, everything is forged. Um, it's all upgraded. I decided to go with um, 325 rear gears in the thing after doing some calculations on this, on the four speed and the gear ratios and the 28 and a half inch tall tire I'm gonna run on the rear. Um, I wanted a little bit more um, range to use all the torque. Um, I know some of the people who have these real high horsepower motors on the street even go with um, you know 308s or 290 rear gears. Uh, it makes you, uh, gives you a little bit longer to use all that torque. It makes it slightly more manageable. I say slightly because it'll probably blow the tires off on the highway when I step on it, but it's another problem for another day. Um, other items here, um, kind of start on the back and work way forward, Rick's tank. Um, this is their Tri-5 tank, beautiful piece. Um, the hat here with the pumps and the pickup unit. Um, so I went with uh, twin um, uh, Wal uh, so Walbro um, 525 pumps. So the 525 is the size of the Hellcat pump. So I've got two of those. <laughs> um, what you need for this motor. So to run on pump gas, um, the fuel system is basically all um, Fragola connections, stainless steel lines, um, half inch um, aeromotive where I can get that for some of the parts. The, it's a pulse width uh, modulation system. So um, Vaporworks, uh, Carl over there, I spoke with him and he helped me piece this whole thing together. So the pumps basically run off of a sensor here that um, only turns the pumps as fast as they need to. So it's actually a return the system technically. Um, obviously I'm going to a regulator and I've got a return. Um, so that's actually for vapor lock issues. Um, in hot days and stuff like that, it's just more of a safety thing. It's actually not needed except for I'm running crazy horsepower. So it's a safety. Um, running to a filter over here, a 10 micron filter um, that is not a doesn't have a check valve in it. Um, so we don't have any lock issues with that as well. It's not actually needed because there's the filters in the tank on the pumps, but again, overkill, safety, makes it easy. And then running up here and then runs into the, um, the connection lines and stuff that I built here. So should be, uh, should be sufficient for the motor and keep it happy with fuel. Um, let's see, other items. Recently I've been working on an exhaust system. I've got half of it over here, which I'll get to in a second. I'm TIG welding it all up, but uh, it's three inch um, stainless all the way back. Um, the pipes are all the Summit um, Build-A-Kit pieces. Um, Deeds Engineering I used for the, the, the tab mounts here, um, also on the back. And then also all the V-bands are all made in USA. It's a nice quality stuff that's a machine groove fit. Um, flex joints, obviously. Coupling joints to remove the flex and vibration from the motor to the rest of the chassis. Maybe asking what in the heck this tube is here. So that's a, um, a Himholtz tube, a J pipe. Also, it's commonly known or a, um, uh, a resonator tube. So a whole lot of math calculations to figure out the length that's needed. But basically, what happens is. Um, for those of you who have driven cars with aftermarket exhaust, you'll sometimes or quite frequently get drone, which basically means at a certain RPM it has this weird resonance drone in the car. Really loud, really annoying. So what this does is actually allow you to uh, calculate the pulse width and the traveling of the exhaust, and it sends it in um, with a certain hertz resonance, and it returns it and cancels out the drone at certain RPMs. 
So you've got to do calculations on the speed of sound moving through the pipe and the four pulses per revolution on the V8 engines, the likely point of drone on this thing, which is about 20, 2100 RPM on the highway, and then do a bunch of calculations to figure out how long you actually need that tube. So it's completely capped off over here on the end. Um, and in theory, it should work pretty well of canceling any uh, drone out of this. So the Borla um, XR1s, they're, um, uh, I believe they're dual core ones. They're not the completely empty straight through ones. Um, mounted obviously where they fit, kind of up and out of the way. And then under the rear end, because this thing is pretty low and I've got plenty of ground clearance going under the rear end as well. Come on over here and then it drops to uh, three and a half inch pipes. Um, which I've mounted the rear bumper on to make sure that all my pipes are parallel and exactly where they need to. A lot of times they come up here and they dump down, which was what I originally was going to do. Uh, but with the uh, bumper brackets coming in here, it didn't work. And, I, you know, it looks good with exhaust. A little bit of a tip coming out of the back behind the bumper. So that's what I went with. Um, obviously, another piece of exhaust here. Getting ready to weld up. If I come over here, I'm... TIG welding all the uh, joints. Everything is tacked in, um, except for these uh, I welded up last night. Um, put a brace in here in case this ever flexes and cracks. But uh, yeah, everything is getting back purged. I've got a little bit of a um, redneck back purge system here going on with um, masking tape, but it works pretty well. And uh, let's see what else we have going on. Uh, body, not a whole lot. Um, obviously, I have the chassis, so I welded in, I cut and welded the uh, new chassis brackets here. Um, everything clears, fits perfectly, so all in all, pretty solid. Um, after the exhaust goes in, that's basically the completed chassis. Um, I got some more parts here showing up. I've got the steering column already, obviously. That goes in. Um, once the exhaust is on, I'm going to drop the body down and then start uh, doing a rough assembly on the front end. Um, I'm going to mount the, all the cooling stack that I've got. Uh, CNR built me a yeah, sweet cooling stack for this thing. But I'm going to have to have an oil cooler, transmission cooler, fans, supercharger cooler, um, power steering cooler. I mean, all kinds of stuff in this thing. So get that all sorted, figured out where I'm going to run the lines, where everything's going to mount, if I'm going to have to make custom inner fenders or use the stock ones, um, you know, where I'm going to mount the computers, all that stuff. So it's getting there. I uh, haven't had a huge amount of time to work on it uh, over the summer. Obviously, I've been on the boat and kids and vacations and doing other stuff. But, uh, you know, all in all, it's working out pretty well. Um, a lot of progress, but I haven't done a huge amount on it, believe it or not, other than just bolting in stuff and the exhaust work. Um, but uh, yeah, it is progressing. So until the next update, um, hopefully the next update will be when I've got the front end assembled and everything for you know finally mocked up and uh, then i'll put the chassis away and put the body probably back on the rotisserie and start on the body work